how do we actually use this cool thing? Well, we have, as I said before, a USB cable that needs to plug straight into it. And this is where we introduce you to the integrated development environment, the Arduino software. Now, on the software, what you'll see is there is a... This whole piece of software, when I launch it, has something called... It calls itself a sketch. So every new file is called a sketch. Uh, of course, we can change the name of that to whatever we want. Um, there's a couple of icons up here. When I roll over, that one says verify. That one says upload using programmer, new editor window, open another window, save. And on the right hand side, there's this one called serial monitor, a little drop down over there. There's all sorts of really cool stuff that you can do with these, which I'll get to later. But the important thing is this big white empty space in the middle. Yeah. Right, so how do we write our first piece of software for the Arduino? The way that we do that is, uh, what I like to do is always write out the very, very simple and important bits of structure that you need in every single program that you write for Arduino. And those are void setup with a couple of curly brackets and void loop with a couple of curly brackets. Now, when you look at this, this is sort of about the structure of a piece of code. First thing it does is it runs that setup function. As soon as the setup function is complete, it begins running its first loop. At the end of the loop, it goes back to the top of the loop and says, okay, I'm doing it again. And it just keeps on doing that while it has power. It goes loop, 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 loop. And it doesn't care how many times it loops because it just wants to do it for as long as it possibly can. Then the battery runs out and it can't do it anymore because it's dead. That's fine. But what happens when you start it up again? Runs the setup first, then the loop again. So, while we're busy programming, we like to give ourselves comments. Inside of the setup function, I've just written one here that says, this is a comment. Two forward slashes makes everything in front of it gray, and that makes us understand that the uh, Arduino software recognizes that as a comment and not code. So I can type whatever I want, and it will not affect the compiling of the code where it tries to understand what you've programmed and make it into something the Arduino can understand. So. We're going to delete the block comment for now. Inside of the, the, the setup, we do everything that we need to do to set up the Arduino for whatever purpose we're about to program into it. So, for example, in this particular example, I'm going to turn an LED on. Now, inside of, uh, we, we have a couple of these LEDs in front of us, a nice little square red one, which we use in the DIY Gamer, and of course, this little green one as well. The, the LED, you'll notice that the LED has a long leg and a short leg. In most electronic components cases, long legs mean they want to have power. They're the anodes. So we're going to put the long leg into one of the pins. We're going to use pin number 13 on the Arduino, which is, it says 13, and I'm just going to literally insert the long leg straight next to where it says 13. There's a little insertion point there, a little black uh, female header. Then right next to that is the GND pin. Inside of the setup, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, I want to turn my, I want to turn pin 13, turn pin 13 on. In order to do that on Arduino, we have to be able to tell the Arduino whether we want a, one of the pins to be an input or an output. Remember I mentioned that these, these digital pins can be either reading anything as a 0 or a 1, as a true or false, an on or off, or it could be telling things to be on or off, 0, 1, true or false. Then what I want to do is inside of my loop, I want to turn on the LED. So I'm going to do that by saying digital write. That's the function to turn something on. So I have to say digital write, which pin number, and whether I want it to be high or low, on or off. So I'm going to say pin 13 is high. High is the same as basically telling the microcontroller to supply it with some voltage. Here's some volts, so you may be able to turn on. And then we're going to take away those, volt those volts to turn it off again. The other cool thing I'm going to do is add another function called the delay function. The delay function works in milliseconds. So if I say I want to delay for a, a second, I would then have to delay for 1,000 milliseconds. And again, close the parentheses, semicolon at the end of that line. And then I'm going to digital write again, from 13 low this time to turn it off. But I'm going to have a much shorter delay in there, 250 milliseconds, which is how long? A quarter of a second. And let's see what happens. In order to compile this, we click on the check mark, the, the tick. And what that does is it basically says to the, um, the, the Arduino uh, development environment says, let's have a look at your code, see how you've written it, and compile it down into something that the Arduino's microcontroller can understand. So once I clicked on the check mark, it says done compiling. So we know that's a great, successful piece of code. I then click on the upload button, which is the right arrow. 
and that will talk directly to the Arduino through the USB cable uh, in order to upload the machine readable code. In order to do that, of course, we have to make sure that the Arduino development environment knows that it's talking to this particular Arduino. So the way we do that is we click on Tools, and we say Serial Port, and you'll see in this, as a, this is a Mac, so you'll notice that there's a couple of things here that uh, are strangely named. Dev, TTY, dot, USB, modem, blah, 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 blah. That is, in fact, the Arduino. I know it's a bit confusing. For those of you using PCs, it'll come up as a COM port. So it'll be COM1 through 30, depending on which COM port it decides it is. Now, if you don't know that the COM port is the right number, the best way to find out is you review which COM ports are available. In this case, I see the USB modem. I then unplug the Arduino, click on Tools, Serial Ports. Ah, OK. Whichever one just disappeared is the one that you want to select in order to program it. So I'm going to plug that back in, click on Tools again. And yes, there it is, USB modem. Click on that. Then I have to choose which kind of board I have. So I click on Tools, go to Board, and then you'll see mine is already selected, Arduino Uno. How do I know it's the Arduino Uno? Because it says it in beautiful white text at the top of my Arduino. Now I've selected the Arduino in the uh, software, which, which COM port it is, USB modem, blah, 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 or in a PC's case, COM port number five, let's say. Uh, and I have also selected which kind of Arduino we have plugged in. Now I can click on the Upload button and it will recompile a sketch for me and upload it. And look at that, that's the result. Check that out. It's on for a second, off for a quarter. On for a second, off for a quarter. Isn't that exactly what I told it to do? Sometimes it's nice to know that things can listen to you. Um, that is what we call our Hello World sketch or our Blinky sketch. Now. You don't have to take my word for it. You're welcome to actually find out um, how to do this stuff with what's built into the Arduino. And the way we do that is we literally click on the up arrow, which is the open file arrow, uh, the open file function. And it has a bunch of examples here. So 01 basics. We inside of that can find the blink function. Do I want to save the sketch? Yes, I want to save it. Saved. And if I look at the blink function, let's see, it turns an LED on for one second, then turns it off one second repeatedly. You'll see there's a block comment over there, as I described earlier. Pin 13 already has an LED on there. So what happens if I'm, in other words, there's already an LED on pin 13. I've, I've, uh, I've already, I've reprogrammed it right now, but let's see what happens if I upload this new code. See, you see it busy flashing when it uploads, and boom. Now we have it on for a second, off for a second. Okay, so the nice thing about the Arduino software is it comes with many, many examples. It's really, really helpful. There's also a help that's been built into it. So if I click on open and I see all of these examples over here listed out, I can open any single one of them and they'll be well commented. They'll, they'll have reference to the online uh, description of the same example. And if I want to find out more about any part of the code, what I can do is I can double click or select any one of the functions that it recognizes, click on help, and click on find in reference. And that automatically opens up the reference that is on your computer and it tells you exactly what a function may do. So let's say I want to look for what the delay function does. So if I just, oopsie, if I select the delay function and click on find in reference it says pause the program for the amount of time in milliseconds specified as a parameter and there's a thousand milliseconds in a second just in case you didn't know so all that is inf that information is sitting in the reference waiting for you to discover it the examples on the arduino built into arduino are waiting for you to explore them uh, there is a massive amount of info in there it's totally worth exploring learn as much as you possibly can it's the coolest thing in the world